Shy, and I wanted to share our updated 2014 schedule with you guys. Now, I did schedule videos in the past, and it's more like when the girls were babies. So I wanted to go ahead and show you our updated schedule and basically kind of show you almost two schedules because it's kind of... It's a lot easier because we don't have all the like more rapid rotations like when you have a lot of bottles and things like that throughout the day. But we have like an activity day and a more day at home, learning activities home day. So I did two different schedules, um, just typed them out real quickly to kind of show you the difference between our two days. And I'll try to link these down below um, in Google Documents or something so that way if it's helpful um, for you guys to see, um, then you can kind of see them that way. And I'll try to also at some point get pictures around the side or something because I know it sometimes helps if it's more visual. So basically the beginning and end of the day look the same regardless of whether we have activities that day or whether we're planning on staying at home. So the things that are always the same is we uh, wake up at 7 a.m., we go downstairs, we have breakfast, we clean up breakfast, and we're basically done with that by about 7.30. Then at 8 a.m., we get the girls dressed, we get them ready for the day. At 8.15, we talk about the day's date. I usually change the date up here, and I say, you know, today is January, Thursday the 9th, and I change all of that. I, you know, go through the calendar, we talk about the weather, and we do all of that. So I allot a little bit of time right there to take care of all those things. When it starts to change, and I'll go ahead and go to activity day now, and then I'll come back and I'll talk about the learning day at home. When it starts to change is around 8.20. So that's when we either go to an activity here at the house or we start getting our things ready to get out the door. So if we have an activity that day, generally our activities start around 9 a.m. So at 8.20, I'll start packing the bags or lunches or anything that we need to take with us for that day. Um, at 8.45, we generally have to leave the house to get wherever we're going. And then usually the activity starts around 9 a.m. or so. Then we get home from the activity around 11, between 11 and noon, depending on what the activity is. And by activities, I mean Isabella's preschool, swim class, dance class, soccer class, all those sorts of things. I generally try to schedule in this morning time slot around 9 a.m. because I find that that's the best time for the girls to do the activities where they're kind of, they listen the best, they're just most attentive and most into it, and I don't have to worry about waking them up from nap to get anywhere and things like that. So I've just found that this 9 a.m. slot works the absolute best for us, and it's also the time that Isabella's preschool starts as well. So then once we get home from the activity, which is generally sometime between 11 and noon, I'll start working on getting lunch together. We generally have lunch sometime from 11.30 to 12.30, depending on what activity it was that day. Then I try to keep the same that rest time starts at 1 o'clock each day now, which we call it rest time, but everyone still takes naps around here. That's the whole reason I'm able to get videos done still. Um, so we have nap time, or I call it rest time, just so it's kind of a big girl thing for Isabella. But nap time from generally 1 to about 3 or 1 to 3.30. And then everyone starts waking up for rest time around 3.30 or by 3.30. Sometimes they're up before that, sometimes they're not. Um, and then we have snack at 3.30. Then at 3.45, the, start, the schedule starts to come together. So, you know, we may have been out during the day, but then those two schedules start to line up and start to be the same again. At 3.45, we'll have some sort of either playtime, learning time, or errand time. If I wasn't able to go get errands done in the morning while one or the other was at an activity, I may have to go run out to Target in the afternoon to go get something or something like that. We're always back home, or I'm starting to get in the kitchen around 5.15 to prep for dinner. At 5.45, I set the table. Now, I don't have them actually help me set the table yet, but once Isabella's four, I'll probably start having her set me, having her help me set the table. They do help me clear the table. Um, they carry their plates over and put them in the sink for me, and it's really cute because even though I haven't, like, really gone with Natalie to, like, prep her on that. She sees Isabella do it, so she does it a lot sometimes too. It's really cute. Anyhow, we eat dinner around 6 now. All this has gotten pushed back a little bit if you look at our older schedules. This has all changed a little bit because of my husband's new job and then also just because the girls have gotten older and our schedules changed ever so slightly. But we eat now around 6 o'clock. Um, about 6.25 I clean up from dinner and we clear the table. The girls help me get their plates from the table. Over there, I usually load the dishwasher at this time. At 6.30, they come back to the playroom and they have some more playtime downstairs. At 7 o'clock, if my husband's home, he actually has an alarm set in his phone where it um, is a certain ringtone and the girls know that that means it's time to clean up. So we clean, we sing the cleanup song. And if I'm just here, if my husband's still at work or whatever, I'll see that it's 7 o'clock and I'll say, okay, it's time to clean up. 
and we'll sing the cleanup song. The girls help us clean up the playroom, and we do that. We're generally done with that by 7.15, so we go upstairs to their bathroom for bath time. And then bath time's about 15 minutes or so. We have them brush their teeth, um, take their bath, and then go to their individual rooms to get pajamas on. At 7.30, they get their pajamas on in their individual rooms. We brush out their hair. I read them a little story, and then they go to sleep. So by 7.45, it's basically lights out and good night. And then by 8 o'clock at night, it is mommy and daddy free time. <laughs> so that is basically what our schedule looks like. I hope that makes sense for me just running through because I know it kind of really sometimes helps just to like visually see this. But that's what our updated schedule looks like or sounds like if you guys were interested. And also, so that is an activity day. Now I did have people asking, you know, what, how do you fit in your learning activities? So, um... If we have an activity that day and they're going to be out in the morning, I usually try to fit it in around this 3.45 after nap time slot. So I give them their snack and if I want to do a learning activity and we've been gone that morning, I generally try to do it at that time of day. That's like our learning slot if we've been gone in the morning. Now, it is slightly different if we're going to be home all day or if it's a learning day where we don't have to be out in the morning for an activity. The morning is the same. We wake up at 7, uh, do breakfast, clean up from breakfast, get dressed, get ready for the day. At 8.15, we still talk about the date, change the date, do the weather, try to keep that around the same time every day. But then we would actually go to learning activity after doing that event. So if we're going to be home for the day, we might talk about that and then go over to the table, which is right next to it, for a worksheet. I find that that works out really well. That rhythm and flow works out great for me. Um, so we generally do that at the desk here in the playroom, and it's generally a worksheet or a writing activity or coloring for Natalie or something along those lines. At 8.45, we'll read books together. So I do a lot of impromptu, just random reading throughout the day. They'll go grab a book and bring it to me. But after we're done with that activity, I try to make a point of reading a book or two or how many ever they want to read. Sometimes with Isabella, it's like 15. But um, we read some books together and um, have that for book time. Then at 9 o'clock, we go upstairs for room time. We're still doing room time. And Natalie now does room time down in the floor. I've talked about room time in a number of different videos. I'll try to have a whole list of videos if I can remember to link them down below. Um, but they go upstairs and they have independent time. If I haven't taken my shower already early in the morning, like at 6 o'clock, I may take a shower here. A lot of times because of activity days, I'm actually getting up before them and taking a shower. I'm already in that routine. So I'm already doing that a lot of days now anyways um, and even on activity day I might already be ready to go so I may use that time for cleaning or something like that and they will be getting their independent time in their rooms. Isabella does independent time with her room open now, with her door open, she just can go in and out. But basically the idea of independent time in their rooms is they're supposed to be working on the ability to play independently in their rooms with quiet activity toys, to not toys that make a bunch of noise and things like that, but puzzles and um, pretend play items like the little dollhouse that doesn't make any noise. Natalie's got a shape sorter in her room, uh, lots of books, and so that sort of thing. And then at 9.30 or 9.45, depending on what time we went to room time, it's generally about 30 minutes long, we go to a combined playtime, and generally that means we come back downstairs to the playroom for uh, playtime together. Then at 10 a.m., I'll do a craft generally at the kitchen table, which is either some sort of coloring, painting, themed craft, holiday craft, something along those lines. It's generally about 30 minutes, so at 10.30 we would clean up from that craft, and if there's any artwork that I want to hang on the wall, I might hang it. A lot of times we just have so much artwork that we're making, I kind of just have an artwork storage area over here to the side, but a lot of times the newer artwork I try to hang up over here. And then uh, at 11 a.m., the girls would just have open playtime here in the playroom. We try to do lunch if we don't have an activity that day around 11.30 to noon. So generally around 11.30 if we don't have an activity. We've had to push lunch back later and later because of our activities and getting home later. So that's kind of pushed lunch back later on the schedule as well. Then rest time would be the same. After lunch, they have open play time. And at 1 p.m., it is rest time or nap time. Nap time goes from 1 until 3 p.m. or 1 until 3.30. And in case you're wondering, that's how I get videos done is because both my girls still take really good naps. And I'm able to film, like right now, it's nap time. So um, at 3.30, they generally both wake up from rest time. And generally when one wakes up, they make noise and it wakes up the other one because the rooms are right across the hall from each other. So that kind of takes care of that. Everyone just wakes up at the same time, generally. 
And then snacks at 3.30, um, 3.45. Now the schedule is starting to come back together, so it's almost the same as over here now. Back at 3.45, we may have playtime, additional learning time, like doing a worksheet, science experiment, or craft. Or I may have to go do an errand. If we had learning time in the morning, I need to run out and grab something at a Target or go pick up something, something along those lines. I may go out and do that at that time. We also sometimes have afternoon play dates with their friends. So that is what that time is open for. At 4.45, playtime in the playroom, just an open playtime. And then the schedule starts to come back together and be about the same, whether it's an activity day or whether it is a learning day. Um, I was prepped for dinner at 5.15, set the table at 5.45. Dinner time for us is at 6 o'clock, and then generally we'll be cleaning up from dinner by about 6.25. Um, playtime back here in the playroom, open playtime around 6.30, and then at 7 o'clock again the timer goes off where I let everyone know it's time to clean up. We clean up the playroom, bath time, pajama time, and lights out and good night by 7.45. So hopefully that makes sense without being able to see it right there in front of you. Um, maybe my suggestion would be like print it off and then watch the video, which I'm saying is the, in the videos that doesn't help at all. But that is our updated schedule. Basically, my girls are almost four years old and two years old, and this is the schedule that really works great for us now. We've started to get in a great rhythm for this, so I wanted to go ahead and share it with you guys. And you can see that our foundation of what the schedule was that like three hours, seven, eleven schedule that they had when they're babies just carried right over into our regular schedule. So it wasn't that huge of a change for us as they got older because the schedule just kind of slowly changed to suit their needs as they got older. So it's really kind of neat. So that is our current schedule. Hopefully this has been helpful for you guys to see how we fit learning activities in our day. And thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.